How's it going, everybody? This is Ed Clay with East Ivy Mansion. I'm here with celebrity wedding planner Angela Prophet. Angela, how are you doing today? Great, how are you? I am fantastic. I'm excited to have you here. Thanks for having me. It's uh, a beautiful, dreary day, but that's okay. Totally. That's totally okay. So, Angela, tell us a little bit, or tell the brides out there that are looking to plan a wedding, uh, you know, kind of what to look for uh, when they're first getting started. They just got the ring on their finger. Yep. Uh, what's the first step uh, for those brides? The first step is making a guest list. You have to make a guest list and get an understanding of about how many people you're going to have because you can't shop for a venue until you have a guest list. So, so after a guest list is completed, do you suggest uh, the brides contacting a wedding planner, multiple wedding planners, and if they do, what do they need to be looking for uh, when they contact the wedding planner? Yeah. I definitely suggest if you want a wedding planner and you know that you want to work with a wedding planner, do it on the front end. Um, there's definitely a huge benefit from a planner being involved from the very, very get-go. An experienced planner can really offer a lot of pros and cons when you're looking at venues and probably offer some feedback just through experience that you're not going to read on the internet. Um, I recommend meeting with two or, two or three planners just to make sure that you're getting what you want. Um, it's, it's like photography with planners. We're all different. We all have our own style. We all focus on different things. So really connecting with your planner is important because you're probably going to be working with them for about a year. I mean, that's pretty typical is for people to plan a wedding in about a year. Um, but a lot of brides think that they don't need a planner or maybe they can do it on their own, which is okay too. But when you get into the, when you get a planner in the middle of the process, um, sometimes I'm cleaning up messes and it ends up costing people more money just by educating them on how to spend their money. So if, if the brides do know that they want to work with a the planner, there's a huge benefit in working with someone who really knows what they're doing. And we save people a lot of money and a lot of stress just by educating them. Well, let's talk about that because, I mean, ultimately, or obviously, mm -hmm. uh, you're one of the best wedding planners in the country. I mean, you... you uh, speak across the country, you teach, you're an educator as well as a planner. Um, you know, what is it like working with you for the brides? What, what, what can they expect when they go meet Angela Prophet the first time? Mm -hmm. What are you going to set up? What are you going to teach them? And just, just what do they, what do they yeah. look for? Well, something that's unique to how we do things, and I really didn't know that it was that unique until I started traveling all over the place and working <laughs> and meeting new planners and other planners. Um, it really opened my eyes and I really got to see how different we really are from a lot of planners. Um, my degree's in psychology and so I worked in a mental health facility before I did this. And really having that background has added such value to what we offer. So for instance, I personality profile all of my clients and all the vendors that we work with and all the team members we work with so that I understand how their brain is wired. I really want to customize the message for the client. Um, so that's a little bit, it's a little unique and the experience is very different. So, you know, you hear that saying growing up as a kid, treat everyone the same and, you know, definitely treat everyone with respect. But if you customize the message for how their brain is wired to hear it and they understand you a little bit better, there's a huge gap between the communication and the customer experience. So if you can nail that and really understand how you need to communicate, people are much happier. So that's one thing. And then the other thing that sets us apart, I'm a big tech geek. So I really, um, in working with clients all over the world, I really, really educate them on how to go paperless and how to plan their wedding without using paper. So there's three free apps that we put on our clients' phones uh, the minute they hire me. And after I understand you know, how their brain is wired, after I personality profile them, then I, I give them a little 15-minute lesson. I'll say, give me your phone, give me your iPad. We're going to put these apps on here. This is how you're going to sign your contracts. This is how you're going to see all of your quotes. And this is how we're going to communicate throughout the process. And by doing that, it's actually cut our email down by hundreds a day just by sharing the information with our clients. So they have access to it with one click of their phone or their iPad or their computer. So some planners think I'm crazy. They're like, you give access to your clients? And I said, well, that works for me. It doesn't mean that it's gonna work for you, but it's worked for us very well over the years. So those are two things that are pretty unique to how we do things. Okay, so uh, you know, they, they go see you. Um, you set them up with all these apps, and actually, you teach that across the country as well. Yep. So it might help them in other parts of 
<laughs> other life and being organized. Yeah. Um, what else, like with a with a bride coming to you, uh, how do you ease, uh, let's say, the uh, the stress on them? Mm-hmm. I know that you actually are in the wedding market right now in the wedding industry trying to change the uh, view mm-hmm. from across the board to be more positive yeah. to where everybody's not a bridezilla. I mean, you hate that kind of yeah, stuff. I, I know. Do. <laughs> so t- talk about that a little bit. T- talk about why planning a wedding doesn't have to be the most stressful thing in their life. And it's almost like a, it's almost like embedded into people's brains because of what they see on TV. Yeah. Well, TV has skewed the vision a little bit. And of course, drama sells. Um, I have people ask me, gosh, do you work with Broadzillas? Do you experience that? And I'm like, no, I would never tolerate that. Um, we run a pretty stress-free office around here. And again, it all comes with communication. And it all comes with education. So the more I can educate my clients and the more comfortable I can make them and having open communication, the better. We definitely have a strategy in place, and that's key. So, you know, becoming a wedding planner, there's not a lot of schooling out there. You know, you go to, uh, to become an MD, you go to medical school, right? And you get this diploma and then you go open up a clinic. Well, anybody can kind of roll out of bed and be creative and put up a website and say, I'm a wedding planner. Um, so what I'm trying to create is some type of schooling and help the other organizations in the industry that are trying to do that, to create some type of a platform and a strategy Um, that you can do your passion and make money at it. And it's okay to make money. The more money I can make, the more people I can help. Mm -hmm. So it's not a bad thing. So the more education I can put out there, the more products. And again, some planners say, why are you going to share with everybody what you do? And, you know, I'm not going to do this for the rest of my life. I mean, come on, let's be honest. We work 30-hour days sometimes, Mm -hmm. and we're up till 3 in the morning, and we haven't eaten. I mean, but we have such a glamorous life. And, you know, I'll say it's the most rewarding thing. Um, If I knew 10 years ago what I know now, I don't know if I would have gone into this industry, but I know God put me on (laughs) earth to be a wedding planner um, because I am very calm. And coming from mental health and coming from working in a hospital setting where those people, they really do have problems and they really are sick. And I can't fix their problems because I can't rewire their brain. But in the wedding industry, most problems are fixable. And when I have some girls that might have a moment, and they all do, because family can put stress on each other, you know, bring it back into perspective for them and say, let's really talk about problems. And, you know, you're getting to have the wedding of, of your dreams. You, know, you really don't have problems. So let's talk about the root of the problem and, and communicate and, and figure out a way to make this a more positive environment. So my thing is just keeping everybody on the same page and I hate it when people argue because there's really no sense in it. Weddings are supposed to be fun Absolutely. and exciting. Now, now, someone out there that might be uh, looking at having a wedding on a budget or on, on mm-hmm. a, uh, a lower budget per se, I guess everybody sure. somewhat has a budget Absolutely. of what they want to stick with. Um, what are some tips uh, or, or advice that you could give as an expert mm-hmm. in how you could save uh, people some money uh, yeah. in, in planning their wedding? Sure. Well, again, the first thing is the guest list. So, and and I'll give you an example. I actually had a client two years ago contact me and she said, I'm having 20 people, it's a destination wedding and I wanna spend $10,000. And I thought, that's a lot, that's a good budget for 20 people. And she said, oh, but by the way, I booked my venue, it was four grand. I booked my photographer was three grand. My videographer was three grand. My dress was four grand. I'm like, oh, well, you're already over your 10. And so those, those, numbers didn't move and so you know i'm thinking well how can i help you she said well maybe if i give you 10 more you know can you do that what else do i need and i said well of course you need some food and decor and a a bar maybe you know there's just a few elements that you need but definitely i can stay under that number so it helps for me to know what the expectations are Mm -hmm. but in this day and time there is no right or wrong expectation so again that's where education comes in so i get some people who say i want to invite 500 people i want to have a venue in in a big city and a band at seven o'clock at night with an open bar and i want to spend fifteen thousand (laughs) dollars and you know i ask them is that really what you can spend what you can afford and i have some say i cannot spend over a penny and then i have others say well we can spend more we just isn't that enough money 
And so based on how they respond is based on how I respond. So, you know, I go into education mode again and tell them, you know, your guest list will dictate the amount of money that you end up spending in the long run. So if you can only spend that much money, we really have to evaluate your guest list and your location because location matters. So I tell girls, they're like, but my dad's a minister to church. We have to invite everyone in the town. And I'll say, well, you might want to have a destination wedding far away or, um, you know, close your eyes and think if you were dropped on an island and you had no internet, no Facebook, no, none of that stuff, who would you miss? You would not miss all 500 of those people, I, I promise you. <laughs> um, you would probably miss, you know, your closest family and friends, and that's your A-list. And if people get mad at you in your church because they didn't get invited, then they've never had to pay for a wedding before. And it's, it can be very costly. So again, I have to assess what the expectations are. That's the very, very first thing. And then I can go through and educate them on what things really cost. and. I kind of call it smart money versus stupid money, and I'm the first to say that's stupid money. But hey, if that's important to you, we, we'll find a way to make it happen. But again, I'm a very honest planner. I think people appreciate the honesty in me. And um, you know, I grew up very frugal with very frugal parents, and a lot of people look at my website and they're like, oh my God, how much does this cost? And you know, again, I'm like, everyone has different priorities, but it's my job to make everything look like it's a million bucks. You know, that's what I do. And if I can make it, or my staff can go to Hobby Lobby and buy it, and then you can use it in your home later on, we're gonna do that versus renting it. And I have some people that just wanna pay for convenience. They just wanna show up. They don't wanna do anything or make anything, which is fine too. So, it just depends on the priority. Nice, so uh, let's talk about, I wanna go into destination weddings here in a second, but let's first talk about Nashville. Yeah. Uh, talk about some of the different wedding venues that you've worked with and the things that you, you like about them. I know that you do things over at the uh, Country Music uh, mm -hmm. uh, Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. um, really all around town. Talk about the different wedding venues and if people are in Nashville looking at different wedding venues, uh, what they have to look for with each of the, the top ones. I mean, Nashville has so many venues and you know, you, you have Nashville in the middle and then you have all these little towns around it which offer the country hillside that some brides come here for. Um, me personally, what our clients really want is to experience Nashville. So most of our business is in downtown Nashville. We don't work too often outside of Nashville. I mean, again, I'll work wherever my clients want to go, but most of them are destination brides. Um, Nashville, ever since we've gotten a show, an inter international TV show, and we were in the New York Times and Nashville's been getting a ton of publicity and it's easy to get to. It's very inexpensive to fly in and out of our airport. Um, and people come here for the Southern hospitality. So, you know, we work a lot downtown and I love, you know, the Country Music Hall of Fame and the Skirmahorn or the Symphony Center. We just got a new hotel, the Omni, which is very attractive right now. And those are some of the indoor venues. Um, but we also have beautiful outdoor venues. And something that you'll notice if you look at all the outdoor venues is they're on the outskirts of Nashville. They're not really in downtown Nashville, except for East Ivy. It's the only outdoor venue where you can go and get a private garden and have that really, really private, intimate experience and be downtown Nashville. So it's awesome because some of my brides don't want to pay for transportation to haul people an hour outside of town, you know, just to get that country garden feel. Um, so I always, you know, assess what the bride wants and what their budget's going to be and then give them some choices. But it seems like everyone wants to stay within the downtown area because they want their guests to go to the honky tonks and experience all the fattening food <laughs> that Nashville has. That's good. Well, so okay, let's let's now talk about uh, destination weddings, mm -hmm. which uh, which you love to do. Yeah, I uh, you do. love to travel. Yeah. You've done weddings all over the world. Mm -hmm. You've actually done weddings for some of my friends who are celebrities. And yeah. one of the things I love about you is you keep it very, very private. Uh, so that's one thing people have to look forward to if they work with you is that you don't uh, you don't talk a whole lot no. uh, about whom you work, who, who you're working with, and those type of yep. things. I don't care who anybody <laughs> is. As long as you're in love and you want to get married, I will help you get to the altar and have a good experience. And a lot of times, I don't even know what my clients do. I'll have people call me and say, we want you to, so-and-so wants to interview. I'm like, okay. And they'll say, well, you have to sign confidentiality forms. Like, okay. And again, like I'm, people say I grew up in a bomb shelter because I don't watch TV. I don't really read magazines. I, I get inspiration from my clients. 
I mean, obviously, at times I do have to do a little bit of research just to protect my client and protect the vendors and the staff and get security involved and things like that. Um, but it's actually a whole lot more work um, on my part. But again, I'm there to take care of whatever their needs are. So, uh, you know, you also do a lot of destination weddings, and that's one of the things that I know that you love to do because you love to travel. So, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, where your favorite place uh, to have a destination wedding has been. Oh gosh, I've been all over. I love the beach. I and mean, I'm just a beach girl. I love to surf. And so naturally, I love going to the beach, but you always have the challenge of the weather. That's something I cannot control. So a lot of the venues that I look for at for my beach weddings, I make sure they have a really good backup plan, which is not always in an ugly ballroom. Um, we really try to keep the area pretty, even if we are underneath. Um, it, you know, if a storm's coming, we have to be under something. And the answer is not always a tent on the beach because the wind can be rather heavy. Um, but probably my favorite beach wedding was a country artist that I worked with and they wanted something very private and very intimate, just the two of them and God, they were really, really strong Christians and when we were flying in to do the wedding, me and the photographer and the, the videographer, there was this sandbar and so the photographer said, and do you think that they would be up for getting married on the sandbar? I'm like, well, we'll see, we could ask them, sounds pretty cool to me. So we checked, we checked it out the day before, and even though the tide was a little high the next day, we ran right through the water out to the sandbar, and it, it was really special, it was really cool. The minister, the lady, she said, I've never been asked to get in the water before. I'll yeah. kick my shoes off and, and get in, and I'm like, well, there's first time for everything. Yeah. I'll learn something new every weekend, depending on who I'm working with and what they want. So that was probably the most memorable, just because I've never had anybody get married in the middle of the water. Yeah. Um, so that was really unique and fun. Nice. So anything else uh, that you can think of right now um, that someone watching this would benefit from if they were planning or if they are mm -hmm. planning their wedding? Well, when again, when you're looking for your destination or you're looking for your venue, make sure you have your guest list together and make sure you have your priorities in line. Um, a lot of the venues, brides will sign contracts with them before I'm ever even part of it. And that's, again, okay. but. If you don't have someone walking you through the process, for example, um, they'll say you have ten, a 10 hour time frame for setup, party, and breakdown. And then they come to me and I'll say, well, that's okay, we can work within those parameters, but your labor is going to be higher because I have to hire 200 people to set up the forest that you want us to create in two hours. How, but if you would have spent a little bit more money to book the venue for 24 hours and buy it out, um, we could have saved a lot of money on the labor. So those are things that people don't think about. We time lapse a lot of our events. So when parents come and ask me and compare their daughter's wedding to their best friend's daughter's wedding, you know, I'm like, hold on, let's talk about where, the time frame. You know, there's so many little things that go in behind that that dictate all those things. But um, you know, a noise ordinance, for example, a lot of the outdoor venues that I work at, there's a noise ordinance. The band has to stop at 11 o'clock. And if I'm work with, working with some big partiers and they want to go till 3 a.m., we might want to either A, look at a different venue, or B, have an after party set up. And I have transportation that comes and picks everyone up at the venue and takes them downtown and we have an after party. So just knowing the overall logistics before sinking in to the venue is really, really important to have all the answers and the priorities laid out. So um, you know, you've done two weddings here, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, vow renewal for Eddie and Taj, which was on that SWV show, yes. and then the dream wedding giveaway where we gave away a $100,000 uh, dream wedding. It was actually higher than $100,000 yeah. when we got done with it, uh, which was awesome, and all the vendors donated. Uh, talk a little bit about East Ivy, maybe what sets us apart uh, the vendors that we work with, because we work with some amazing vendors. We have, in my opinion, the best caterers, uh, amazing photographers, some great videographers. Talk about the team, uh, the versatility uh, of, the, of the property, and just uh, your thoughts on East Ivy. Well, first off, East Ivy is beautiful, and I love all the different nooks and crannies that it has, because you can make it look totally different 50 million different ways. So the two weddings that we did here were actually in the same week and we made it look one way and then repurposed some of the things and then flipped it and made it look totally different. And you can't do that with all venues. Um, just the outdoors, 
the the property and the the grounds it's so well kept and it's so well manicured and everything has to be perfect and walking into a venue that already cares about it looking manicured is easy easier on me as a planner because there's some venues I walk into and there's trash cans and you know there's trash and then I have to seem like a brat and go find the owner and say hey can you kind of like pick this stuff up and sometimes I ask and they just don't even respond so you know we end up doing it ourselves sometimes so obviously I like to recommend and work at places where other people care about the same things that I care about which is not only the way that it looks but the customer experience and so communication and follow up and follow through are the three most important things that are, it's gonna set not only a venue apart, but a vendor apart. Um, follow up and follow through is a problem in any industry. And for brides, when you're getting married, again, it's the most important thing you've got going on in your life. And the last thing you wanna worry about is follow up and follow through. And that's one thing that I love working at East Ivy is I never had to worry. It's not like I have to have a to-do list on top of a to-do list <laughs> because if I ask for something or the bride needs something or wants something, there's an immediate response that is quicker than any venue just about that we work at. And the flexibility is wonderful. So if a vendor needs to come in a little bit earlier or pick up their stuff the next day, you know, you have the power to be able to say, sure, you know, we'll work around your schedule, which it's some venues, um, it's a wedding meal, and they do seven weddings in a weekend, and we don't have that versatility. Right. So it's really, really refreshing to work at a venue that, that the, the same goal, we have the same goal. We just wanna make the client happy. That's, that's all that we want. Um, so that was great. And then having the indoor-outdoor capability too, having a little bit of an indoor space, like for the food, if you, you know, the brides wanted to do stations. And then having the pool is, incredible i love the pool setting it just gets you into the spring summer mood um, even if the weather's a little humid people don't mind it depending on what month you're getting married in but i mean we didn't have to bring in tents or air conditioner or anything for those weddings but we always have backup and there's a beautiful space at east ivy where the garage actually is which you can put a, a big beautiful tent there if you have to so that's, again, something that's very important for whenever I'm pl personally planning the wedding is my brides that only want everything outdoors, I'll say, you know, you can spend a million dollars, but if people don't have a good experience, they're gonna leave there and complain about how cold or how hot they were. So we want to make the environment very, very comfortable for people as well. And that environment can be created here. Well, Angela, thank you for uh, doing this. Yeah, and. I'm excited about the, the future of all of your teaching and uh, traveling and destination weddings. And maybe one day you can buy an island and all these things. And it so, will happen. Yes. And uh, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thanks for having me.